This week we're in the East Central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We're targeting big fish in skinny water. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forums for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week we fished the East Central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We're fishing the Indian River and the Mosquito Lagoon for big fish and skinny water. That's a good one there. That's a nice one, huh? Nice. <laughs> nice fish. Oh. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. The East Central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum has a diverse fishery, but it's probably most known for its red fishing. There's very few places in the state that you can go and find these massive schools of reds in shallow water. We took a couple trips to the East Central section and visited the Indian River and the Mosquito Lagoon. Our first visit was the Mosquito Lagoon. You know, this lagoon is bordered by Pond Simlet to the north and Merritt Island to the south. We met up with this week's guest host, Eric Templeton, aka Chase Him Down on the Forum at JB's Fish Camp. You know, this place is the local watering hole. It's the place to talk fishing. A lot of the guys even pick their clients up here in the morning. We met up, we had some adult beverages, and went over the plan for the following day. We met Eric before the sun rose and loaded the boat full of gear. Then we headed over to the Canaveral National Seashore boat ramp. Running to Eric's first spot, I was amazed at how beautiful this place was. But one thing was pretty clear, we had a full moon. And those that fish long enough know that a full moon can mean a tough bite. Typically on a full moon, fish feed heavily at night. Usually you'll find a good bite early in the morning and late in the evening. All right, first spot of the morning, sun's just coming up, sitting here in Mesquite Lagoon. What do you got planned for us, Eric? Uh, we're gonna work into this little bay here where we've had some fish. Uh, we're gonna start out by throwing top waters. Let's just work our way in until we find this school and then you know see if we can get them to eat top waters. And mainly just targeting redfish. I mean, that's pretty much the target for today. That's what you've been catching? Yeah, we, you know, mainly, mainly reds, but throwing the top waters with all this bait, as you can see, we got bait all around us. You, you can catch a bunch of trout out of the bait too. Talking to Eric, he said you wanted to target these pothole areas, these white sections in between the grass. After a few casts of that rapple of plug, I got the first bite of the morning. Happened to be a trout. You know, we were looking for some reds on that flat for a while, and it took a boat going by to push them up. Thanks for helping us find them. <laughs> Boat runs along, scares the fish up. As the sun continued to rise, we stayed on that school of fish. But unfortunately, I just could not get them to completely commit under this topwater plug. Nice. Good job. I had one on a topwater plug, pulled the hook. Eric switched over to gulp shrimp. Laid it in front of him and it didn't take long. Oh, what a pretty fish. Slot fish too, huh? Nice fish. Look at that, he ate that three inch molten gulp shrimp. Seem yeah. to use that quite a bit around here. Yeah, that's kind of our go-to bait, just putting that three inch shrimp right there on a little one or two out J hook. Do it right in that school and he yep. ate it. Couldn't resist it. Good fish. There he is. Popped on that top water plug. Get that top water plug right in that grass. I'm on fire with the trout. So funny, that color is exactly, looks like a baby trout, right? We worked that school of fish for a while, but they started to get spooky. We knew it was time to make a move. Pulling up to this next spot, Eric said this was gonna be more single fish, maybe some tailing fish, more precise casting, and super skinny water. You know, looking at it, this is the reason why I came to this region. Eric got up on the polling platform, I got up on the bow, started making some blind casts. It didn't take long, and I got into that trout bite. Male trout, you hear him grunting? Only the males grunt. 
Eric's up on the pole on platform. He's pointing out fish that I can't see. I'm seeing fish he can't see, but finally it comes together. We got a fish right in front of us. This fish had his head stuck in the mud, and I kid you not, stuck in the mud. We weren't very far from him. He had no idea we were there. He had one thing on his mind, and it was to feed. Oh, <laughs> what a take! Oh, <laughs> what a take! That was awesome. That was great. That fish sat there with his nose in the grass. We went past him. I literally had to put it on his nose. He popped his nose up out of that grass, and I watched him eat it. What a classic bite. Good fish, too. Yeah, that was worth the trip right there. Seeing that, that's worth that was That was one of the coolest seats I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> The way that thing did that. So cool. You pointed them out. Sight casting to him. What a great fish. Ate that five inch jerk shad. Put it on his nose. Just using 20 pound fluorocarbon and that worm hook that I'm using. Run it weedless. It's a pretty fish. Oh yeah. So that really wasn't a giant for your area. You're telling me you get 30, 40 pounders, but I tell you what, top slot fish, you know, sight casting to them, I'll take that every day. Oh yeah. I mean, when you can see them like that, it's oh. a it's a whole different ball game when when you're when you're catching them out of a school or when you actually point that one single fish out and you watch that fish from start to finish eat. Got to make that's, the cast. That's the most exciting thing you can do. We continued to make our way down the flap. This wind was getting increasingly worse. You know, we were practically on top of these fish before we were seeing them. You know, we decided we needed to make the move and I wanted to try the fly rod. And because of this wind, we couldn't get to some of Eric's best spots to throw the fly. We had to tuck in behind the lee of some of these islands, but you know, this water was really murky and it was hard to see these fish. Okay, I don't claim to be a great fly fisherman. You know, I can throw it, I can chuck and duck. And this fish was close. He put me on one, but I think maybe it was maybe 10 feet away, a little too close. I'm a better long caster than I am a short caster. I don't know, I'm out of excuses. I just know that I whiffed it. Despite the adverse weather conditions I saw what this area had to offer and its potential, you know, Eric put me on a good bite despite the tough wind conditions. We got some great redfish and great trout action, all on artificial lures. This segment is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. If you spend a lot of time on the water fishing, your rod is your ultimate tool. Penn's Blue Water Carnage and Legion Inshore rods are designed and balanced for optimum performance when paired with a Penn reel. These rods feature a composite graphite blank that includes a carbon shield built into the blank and guide wraps for enhanced performance. Carnage rods feature EVA torque grips that are contoured to fit the hand perfectly and prevent the rod from twisting while under a heavy load. Penn Legion inshore rods have grade A cork handles on lighter action rods and the heavy action rods have sculpted EVA handles. Both series feature Fuji stainless steel frame guides. If you seek a high performance, durable, affordable rod, Penn Carnage and Legion inshore series should be your choice. You know, the Mesquite Lagoon is probably most notorious for its red fishing, but it's not the only area in the east central section that you can catch these fish. Cameron Sherl Knight, aka Truton, in the east central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, is also on a hot bite in the northernmost section of the Indian River Lagoon. The Indian River Lagoon is a little bit more known to me. I live on the southernmost section of this lagoon system, but this thing is 150 miles long. We're going to be fishing at the northernmost stretches of this, and I've never even visited this area before. First thing in the morning, I met Cameron at the Parish Park in Titusville and launched the Triton. Talking to Cameron, our plan was to head to this northernmost section of the Indian River Lagoon where he had been finding these big schools of bull reds. We were going to look for them at first light, hope to see him making some wakes or some tailing fish. All right, first thing in the morning up here in the east central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum, we're up in Titusville. Cameron, Truton on the forum. What do you got for us today? I'd say we're looking for some big redfish and black drum. Uh, we got a real cold day. Um, 
We've got a slight window of opportunity here this morning. We're gonna look for some fish, push up on the shallow flat, see if we get a shot out of them. So light winds is, is ideal, so you really sight cast into these fish. We're up on the northern end of the Indian River Lagoon. I actually live in the most southern end. I've never fished up this northern end. You can't get any further than right here in the Indian River, correct? You can't get any further, this is it. So We're big, all the way up. Big bull reds. Big bull reds, big black drum. I'm ready. Should be a good time. So yeah. we're gonna kinda head up in this area, up along this west bank here? Yeah, we're gonna look, we're gonna take this bank down. These fish are gonna sit probably about 100 yards off the bank. It slowly slopes off. They kind of run their edge. There's a lot of mullet, a lot of shrimp in here. And these fish just go up and down this edge feeding. So these are big fish. I mean, you're saying 20 to 50 pound bull reds. Yeah, I mean, these are about the biggest fish we get. You really need to beef up your tackle fishing these fish. So we're gonna use braid, but you know, 4,000 size reel. We're using these new pen spoon fishers and got some spider wire ultra cast and only 20 pound fluoro. Is what only 20 I was kind pound, of surprised by that. Yeah, only 20 pound fluoro. We're just gonna step it up to about a 20 pound braid. Uh, these are our big breeder fish. We need to take care of them and get them in quickly. So we're making our way on this first flat. We're really not seeing a whole lot. We pushed up one small school of red, so we decided to make a move over to the other bank. And immediately, we push up some fish. I think they're right there. Yeah, yeah. See the boils? See the boils? Once Cameron got a little closer to these fish, he quickly realized that these things were black drum. You know, not only do they have schools of big red drum, they have these big schools of black drum, both equally fun to catch. We pushed these fish up and when we did, they kind of spooked a bit and it took a while to simmer down. But talking to Cameron, he said, just give them some time, you know, and they'll find their little happy spot, settle down, and we'll be able to target them again. So the key is to get your shrimp right out in front of them. Just let it sit, don't do anything to it. Right, you want to be out in front of them. Um, they're not going to eat if it's falling. Bait's got to be sitting on the bottom and when the fish run over, they're going to pick it up. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger keeps ice longer. I'm on the water more days than not. A cooler is just as important to me as any other piece of equipment on the boat. In Florida's harsh environment, I need a cooler that's built to last. Yeti coolers are rotationally molded, which makes them virtually indestructible. T-Rex lid latches are the same latches used on ATVs. One piece seamless construction provides long lasting durability. Yetis feature never fail hinge systems, double haul handles, and vortex drain systems. Thicker cooler walls mean more cold containing insulation. Yeti lids have three inches of insulation because that's where it's needed most. And Yeti coolers don't just close, they seal. Yeti coolers are built to take the rugged abuse from the way we work and play. Unlike ordinary coolers, which are typically disposable, the Yeti is built to last. Yeti, wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. So after following them for a while, they found their happy spot, just as Cameron said, you know, we got into the right position, we had fish all around the boat. I'm gonna try and cast. You know, I saw these fish around the boat and I know they were some decent sized fish, but you know, but finally getting to hook into one with this light tackle, I know I'm in for it. <laughs> Cast after cast after cast. Woo! Finally. Oh. Nice work, George. I've caught small ones of these before, but never a big one like this. And I don't know if you even consider this a big one. We're up here. That's gonna be about our average size. That's a that's a good fish. Uh, more important question, where's the school? They're just swimming back and forth, dude. We've had these fish up on this flat right here, back and forth, back and forth, chased them. I mean, we were a half a mile down the shore and we finally caught up to them. And they settled down right here on this bar. We power pulled down and we just had them swimming around us. And finally, I got bit. You know, it's one of the coldest days of the year. You really need light wind and high sun to see these fish. Clear water. You made a nice cast too. He, he, it really he, requires a a nice cast out front of the school. That's the thing, you don't want to throw on them. It's, yeah, it's, fishing these fish in clear, clear shallow water, it's really about presentation. Uh, we're leading these fish anywhere from five to 10 yards as the fish come up to our bait. We start working it then and start presenting it to the fish. <laughs> <laughs> what a fish. The cousins of the red. Big old black drum. That's a stud. Woo! 
<laughs> That's a good one there. That's a nice one, huh? God. It was worth the wait, huh? Oh, it was getting a little frustrating there. I was getting a little nervous. You said stick wait them out. Just wait them out. Just got to let them get their happy spot. Warmed up a little bit. Sun got up a little bit. It was 39 degrees when we left the ramp this morning. This guy decided to Put your tie, bed. God. What a fish, man. Let's let him go. We got yeah. the whole school sitting there. Maybe we got the whole one. school uh, literally 30 yards behind the boat. It's time to get another one. No, I've caught these black drum before, and a lot of people have caught them around the bridges and structures and deeper water. But I tell you, in this shallow water, when you can sight cast to them, they're just as much fun as a redfish. You bet? Yep. Nice, good job. Strong work. Here comes the whole school. Whoa, that's a stud. <laughs> that's a beast. Oh, that's a big one. We had him swimming around the boat. I was, yeah, literally. That one ate it literally five yards off the boat. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Mouth on it, mama can love. Look at that thing. Woo! Oh my god, I can't even hold it, man. That thing is a beast. That's a big old black drum. That is solid, solid fish. Oh, god. North Indian River Lagoon's finest. <laughs> Just take a look at his face. Look at the whiskers on that thing. That's why they call him a big ugly. Real time. That cold water, she should be ready to go soon, George. You know, Cameron and I each got a quality black drum. And we actually had some big red drums swimming around the boat, just couldn't get him to eat. You know, we decided to make the move though. He had something a little different in store, fishing some shallow water, looking for some smaller, single reds, maybe even tailing. This segment is brought to you by Power Pole. Swift, silent, secure. Power Pole, the shallow water anchor, has revolutionized the way I fish. Once I locate a school of fish, the touch of a button that can swiftly stop my boat. Power pole silently deploys so you'll never spook the fish. Even in the toughest currents, I can count on my power pole securely holding me in place. It's completely changed the way I fish, and I can't imagine having a boat without a power pole. Swift, silent, and secure. Nothing stops you like a power pole. We moved off the black drum spot. We got us up here in this super skinny water. We're gonna see how, how shallow this Triton's gonna float. What are we looking for? Uh, we're gonna cruise, cruise the grass. We're gonna look for redfish pushing up shallow this real cold day. See if they're gonna come up here and feed, pick a few off. God, this water's gorgeous. Gorgeous, water's clear, probably perfect conditions to sight fish. You know, just like the Mosquito Lagoon and many other areas that I fish, you know, with these good fishermen, they're targeting these sand holes, these transition areas where the grass meets the sand. A lot of these fish are going to be sitting in these small sand holes. They're going to sit right at the edge of the hole. They're going to ambush these little mullet and uh, pinfish in here. Oh, look, look at this hole. Right on the back side of this hole. You know, sure enough, pull up to one of these first potholes that we see, and the thing's got a redfish in it. You got him. Good job. Is that the only one? No, there's, there's a couple in there. You just were saying they're sitting in those potholes, and you saw them <laughs> sitting there. Nice little slot redfish. Nice. You know what? I'll take sight casted small slot size fish any day of the week. You can't beat sight casting. It's so much fun. Nice. In the boat. Cool. Good job, man. I want one. Let's get another one. All right, we came out here, Cameron. We didn't actually have the jigs, the hooks that you wanted. We kind of improvised. We had these trail cars with these hook holders. And we just put, took the hook holders off, put them on the end of the jigs, and it says it's important to rig these weedless. Yeah, fish a real shallow grass. Pop that on there. Look at that. Pop just it on top of a jig head, skin it. Took the hook holder off, put it on the jig, made yep. it weedless. Now we're using a weighted, weighted weedless jig head. Just like that. Improvise. Works great. Improvise. So you're not actually from this coast. You're from 
Tampa area or? I'm from the Inglewood area, All right. Inglewood, Venice. And you're over here going to school? Yeah, I go to school over here and uh, brought my kayak up here and fish with a couple buddies and we just figured spent, it out in the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, we just spent here fishing. Yeah, we just spent a couple days a week over here, but it's a, it's a killer fishery. It's different from back on back at home, but it was it was really fun to explore. And we spent countless hours out here on the weekends just fishing ex and exploring over here. So we pull up to this pothole and I can see this fish. You know, the thing starts belly rolling, clear as day. You know, get the perfect cast to him, and wouldn't you know, he eats it. Oh, I saw that take. Nice. Good job. Redfish. That's super skinny water. Just saw those trout blow out of there. Casting that same area. That's cool, watch him go through that <laughs> hole. It doesn't get any prettier than this. I mean, we're floating here in a foot of water in this triton, a 24-foot triton. People think of micro skiffs when they think of fishing out here. We're just cruising along. Feel like a fish. Bet we're close to NASA. Oh! oh. Dang. There goes the release. Is hook and release, does that one count? It counts for something, right? Close enough. We got it on video. Yeah. Helicopter messed me up. Hey, that eat was worth it all. That was cool. That was awesome. You know, in between pothole to pothole, while we're moving, I'm blind casting up into the super skinny water into the grass because I keep seeing fish pushing out of these areas. There he is. Nice. Oh, what a take. Oh, that's a nice fish. God, man. super skinny water. He, nice. started, he followed that thing. That's it. God, he shot. I thought blind cast it in there, and I just saw a wake following my bait. Dropped the bait, came up and just sucked that gulp jerk shad right in. Well, he chased about 10 yards yeah. off the bank. That was awesome. Crystal clear. <laughs> nice fish. Oh. That was awesome. He's all lit up. Nice fish, George. What do you say, cameraman? We knew that weather window was going to close on us midday. It you know, exactly sure what they said. One o'clock, like somebody flipped a switch and turned the wind on. Kind of, you know, made it a little tougher to sight cast, but we got some black drum, we got the redfish. Yeah, man, it was a good day. This Enjoyed area it. didn't disappoint. It, it usually does it. Titusville is one of the best redfish, black drum, trout, clear water. It's, it's amazing. It's hard to beat. Thanks so much for showing it to hey, me. Hey, no problem, man. The sight fishing in the east central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum has quickly become one of my favorite fisheries, and I'll definitely be back. So post your reports, and I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. I think I had a bite. God. Rejection twice. Fishing means long runs over open, often rough water. Quietly approaching monster fish in the shallows. Trolling the depths with a frisky live bait for a trophy of a lifetime. The Triton LTS is a bay boat with a big water attitude. It's built to handle every facet of fishing, including the catching part. No other boat fishes, performs, and fuels your angling passion like a genuine Triton LTS. Fish hard, fish bass, fish far aboard a Triton LTS. See us today at your local Triton dealer or visit us at tritonboats.com.